By the time I was 18, I was already a mother of four kids. One day my brother brought this book. I saw the pictures and I saw the words. And I wanted to know what the words were saying to these pictures. And I said to my brother, can you tell me what's happening? Seeing those pictures and those words and not knowing what they meant, I wanted so desperately to put the two together. And I said, please teach me how to read. My husband, when he realized I wanted an education badly, he would make it impossible for me to do it. He would beat me, he would discourage me, he would put me down. Even the men that were surrounding him, they were also supporting the fact that, uh, you know, a woman doesn't need to be educated. Your, your place is in the kitchen. He was prone to violent mood swings, using controlling behavior and demeaning language in order to get what he wanted. When he told me I was worthless, I believed him. Around this time, I met a woman who profoundly changed my life. She came to my village and she found me with other women who were sitting in a circle. She joined the circle. She started talking about education and how her organization is changing the lives of many women. Other women started talking as they were communicating with this stranger. I kept quiet. The stranger looked at me and she said, you have been quiet, what are your dreams? I had never had anyone asking me about my dreams. I opened my mouth. My name is Terry Rai. I want to have an education. She looked at me and she said, if you desire these dreams and you work hard, you can achieve your dreams. And she used the word Tinogona in my language, which is, it is achievable. And I just looked at her. Here I was expecting my fifth child and I had no high school diploma. How can she just say, it is achievable? I felt inspired that another human being can just look right into my eyes and see something that I was not seeing. And I ran to my mother and I said, Mother, I met someone who made me believe in my dreams. My mother said, Terera, you have to write down those dreams and bury them deep down into the ground. Wherever you go, despite the abuse in your own life, the beatings that you receive from your husband, despite all that, those buried dreams who always remind you of their importance. So I wrote down, I want to go to America, one. I want to have an undergraduate, two. I want to have a master's, three. I want to have a PhD, four. And I was ready to go and bury my, my dreams. I was happy. I, I wanted to see those dreams grow. I had a very strong mother. My mother would always say, no matter these challenges that are in front of you, if you desire something so badly, it's within your heart. You will be able to help us. Look at the women in our family. Think about your grand-grandmother. Think about your grandmother. Think about me. We never had an opportunity to go to school. And can you be the one to break this cycle? Leaving my marriage cast me as a pariah. Even relatives and friends whispered behind my back, Hey, she's now an empty can, valueless. Then I applied for an undergraduate program at Oklahoma State University. I would work three jobs to feed the children and still taking classes. When my kids, when they arrived in the U.S., uh, three months down the road, as they were brushing their teeth, uh, I, I saw their gums were bleeding and I knew they were missing fruits and vegetables. In America, fruits and vegetables are a little bit expensive. Yes. So I would many, many times would go to bed hungry. So we went to this local store 
the manager looks at me and said, oh, no, no, in this country, if we give you these leftover fruits and vegetables and if anything happens to your kids after they have consumed them, you end up suing us. And I said, I have no dime to sue anyone. Please, please, I need to feed the children. And the store manager says, okay, here's a deal. I'm not going to hand over the fruits to you. I'm going to put them, pack them in a cardboard box. I'm going to place the cardboard box outside the store near the trash can. And I would find the box dumped into the trash can. Some of the fruits have already spilled over and I would collect everything, wash and go and feed my children. I have a dream, but I'm about to give up. I can't see my children suffering. It's one thing for me to have this great dream, but it's another to see my kids suffering. And I remember my son crying and saying, Mother, this is just too much for us. Look at the kids, Mom. We can go back home. It's okay. We can go back home. One day I'm, I'm walking in the, in the corridor and I meet this woman and she looks at me and she said, I think I know you. And I am thinking, I've met many Americans and many white women. She said, I really think I know you. And I am thinking, gosh, who is this woman? And then it dawned on me that, oh my gosh, that's the very woman that I had met some 14 years back in my village. The one who had inspired me to believe in my dreams. The one who had never seen the poverty in me, the smallness in me, my giant, my champion, the one who said, yes, Tinogona, you can achieve your dreams if you believe in your dreams. This is the rock that has called me back. It was like I had my own secret and my rock, the rock was keeping my, my secret for me and it did over the years. There it is. My mother said, you are the last person to break this vicious circle of poverty and I want you to do that. My mother had reminded me that by giving up, you are letting your own children go through this pathway, this generational pathway. And my mother said, I read back your dreams all night. And when I did, she said something so profound that I think in many ways has shaped my life. She said, Tererai, your dreams will have greater meaning when they are tied to the betterment of your community. So I ended up writing my fifth dream. When I'm done with my education, I want to come back and improve the lives of women and girls in my community so they don't have to go through what I had gone through. And I buried my dreams. What is your dream now? I feel I need to give back. Mm -hmm. It's not only about Tererai, but it is about thousands and millions of children that are out there thousands and millions of girls that are not having the education. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to build a school? I'm trying to build a school. Yeah. Crumbling infrastructure is but part of the problem. So are leaking roofs and broken windows, while libraries and toilets are in short supply. I have been so moved by your story. Your story is, you know, at the core of everything I believe in, in, in the possibility of a human life here on Earth. And for that reason, I am going to help you rebuild your school. I'm donating a million and a half dollars. Yes. I'm donating a million and a half dollars to... Yes. To think that I get to see the results of my believing in my own lifetime, what else can I ask for? It is in those moments of our brokenness, in those moments of our struggles, we begin to 
feel a stirring within our hearts to change the trajectory of our life. Never be silenced. Reclaim your voice and believe in your dreams. And I always say to women, think about your personal dreams and think about how they can impact humanity because that's the reason why we are here on Earth. I was so angry at the rebels for killing my father. My mom, she just didn't know what to do, so she ended up giving me most of the food and she ended up starving to death. I was three years old. In the orphanage, we were taken care of by aunties, but these aunties had their favorites. Number one, got 